Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments with a continuation of the solution series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. And like I've said in previous videos, if you're not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula game. This is challenge 653. So let's look at what we have here. So it's very straightforward. Simply says, list the last Sundays of the 12 months of the year based on the year in cell A2. So if this is 2025, I want to list all the last Sundays for the month. So last Sunday in January, last Sunday in February, all the way to last Sunday in December. Of course, the formula should be dynamic so that when the year changes, this also updates. So that's all we need to do, okay? So from a solution standpoint, I'm going to solve it in two ways, right? There are multiple ways, trust me, you know, but two here, the first one is going to be intuitive, but it's going to be a little long. I mean, I'm going to solve it the way anybody would think about it. At least, you know, if you're just thinking linearly, so to say, you know, that's how you think about it. And that's what I'm going to do. Then in the second one, I take advantage of, you know, some interesting, um, you know, properties about it, you know, to get it done. So hang in there with me. If you want the short, concise, straight to the point one, you can skip to that point of the video. But it's good to see, you know, how we would solve it intuitively. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to list all the dates of the year. My logic is very simple. If I want to know which days are Sundays, first of all, I list all the days of the year. I filter down to get all the Sundays. Once I get all the Sundays, I then filter down to, you know, month by month. So it's like I'm looking at it in blocks now. So all the Sundays in January, all the Sundays in February, and I pick the last dates there, the bottom one, you know, based on how it's arranged. That's, you know, the thinking. So first thing is let's list all the days in the year. So I can use the date function, right? So 2025. Now someone is thinking how we're we going to feed in all oh, the months are 12, the days could be 30, 29. You don't need to bother with that. Excel has interesting ways to handle those dates. So if I give this as you know the first month and then for the day, I give it all the days of the year, sequence of 365. Of course, you're like, we don't have 365 days in the first month. Excel knows that as well. So what it's going to do is going to take the portion it needs. So if it's 31 days in January, it will take 31 and then the remaining days, it slides them to February. Of course, it gets to February, it says, oh, February can't take everything. It takes the 28 and it keeps sliding that way. Okay. So that's how it works. Now I know you're also saying, yeah, this is 2025. That's why we have 365. We could have 366 in a leap year. I'm aware of that. But for this, Let's just look at the logic, you know, I can show you how to make 365 become 366 for a leap year. Okay, but that's beside the point I want to make here. So let's go, right. So now you can see that by doing this, and this is a trick you can use, you know, when you're manipulating dates in any other, um, you know, scenario. You can see 1st of January and it goes all the way, all right? So it's a much shorter formula yeah. but it's not exactly intuitive, yeah. But if you know how dates work, you understand it. So this is the first thing. So the next thing I want to do is to filter down to show me only Sundays, right? So I'm going to make this a variable. Let me call this A, all right? So when I refer to A here, what I'm referring to is all the days of the year. So now what we want to do is we want to filter, you know, A which is filter all those days, but we need which ones? We need only the ones where the weekday is equals to one. Weekday equals to one here means Sunday, right? When you use the weekday function and the second argument is left at the default, it takes Sunday as one, right? So that's what we are just doing. We are just saying filter all these dates, but only show me the ones where, you know, it's a Sunday. That's what that translates to, right? So you see now that if you look at the count here, you know, this has uh, shrunk down to 52, which makes sense. 52 Sundays, sometimes maybe 53 in a year. All right. So this is just, um, you know, Sundays now. The next thing is we want to now look at it in uh, months by months, like blocks of months. So if I were in my formula able to filter out January, I'll have something like this, right? This would be January. And then the last Sunday, you know, technically it's like I use the take function. And then I just say, give me minus one, which is the one from the bottom. Of course, if it's even and it's four Sundays in every month, luckily for us, then it's an easier formula to write. You know, you're just picking every four, like four, eight, 12, 16, and so on. But that doesn't always happen, right? Some Sundays will be, you have five Sundays in a month and so on. So this is the idea I'm going to use, you know, in my formula here. So what I'm going to do now is come back into this expression. Right, I'm going to make this another variable B, right? So follow me here. So what I've done is that A is every day in the year. B 
has now filtered that down to every Sunday in the year. Okay, so now let's come in here. We can use you know a map function because we want to now look at it month by month. So I can say map, you know, and I will give it a sequence of 12. Why am I doing this? Because there are 12 months in a year. So I'm going to have in here, if you look at this, it's 1, 2, 3, all the way to 12. So for each one, if it is one, I would then say, okay, filter these Sundays to show me only the ones in January and then pick the last one. Of course, it's going to do the same for February, March, and so on. That's what the map is going to do. Map will apply the same transformation to all these values here. Okay, so map, we go into the lambda portion. I use a variable x i know that mode ellie will come for me and say victor you're just using a b and x they don't mean anything yes they don't <laughs> but you know what they mean here so just follow me okay so so x now so what do we want to do we want to filter now we want to filter those sundays the sundays are in that variable b okay where the month of that date which is the month of all those sundays is equals to x now follow here x in this case when it starts x will be one which is january so what this will do is to filter and show you only sundays in january and what do you want to do when you get that you want to take you know the last one right which is the last sunday and so it's going to do this for all those months because you've given it here 1 to 12 so it's going to do it for 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so let's close so that's closes the map and this closes the let uh no is that black here that looks like a black okay yes <laughs> okay fine all right good so that's everything and if you look at the formula it matches what you have here so this is kind of intuitive right to me you get a list of all the days in the year then you then filter down to get a list of all the sundays then month by month you filter to see for that month and you take the last one simple so that's very logical so now let's go into the second one right so for the second one the idea here is very simple I'm going to get the last day of the month. Now, when I get the last day of the month, I need to know how far that day is from Sunday. So what I mean is this, if I get the day of the month and the day of the month is the last day of the month is say, it's a Friday, for example, it's a Friday because it's the last day of the month. Obviously I have to come backwards. I can't go forward because if I go forward, I'm going into the next month. So if it's a Friday, I ask myself, how far is Sunday from Friday? And I come backwards by that number of days. That's the idea. Okay. So, get the last day of the month know the distance between that day and sunday and then slide by that okay so now let's get the last day of the month we can use eo month yes eo month can get very emotional so i can show you another way so we can use the date function still i pick the year and then for the months i use a sequence and this time it's still going to be 12 rows but i'm going to do something different which is i'm going to start from the second month right so now think about this so this is going to go from 2nd to 13th and you're like Victor there's no 13th month of the year well technically in the Gregorian calendar not in the Ethiopian anyway you have that there but anyway so there's no 13th month but we had a 365 day of the first month here so it's the same idea when you write this and you put a comma technically meaning that you skip the day argument what Excel is going to do is Excel is going to use zero as the day so now let's think about this what does this mean so if i start with the first one which is two this is february for sure so if you now say zero day of february there's nothing like zero day of february right the first day in february is day one so if i say zero day of february it technically means the last day of january that's what it means so zero day of march is last day of february so if i do this you know it's going to give me the last day of every month right so now let's see if this makes sense. You can see they are all 31, 30. It's only February and that is 28, which is fine. So it shows that this is actually the last day of the month. So that's one way you can do it. So the next thing we need to know is, okay, maybe what day of the week is it, right? Maybe that's the next thing to know. Now, so when you know the, uh, the day of the week, you now say, okay, well, I need to now slide it. How far is it from, you know, Sunday? and that that should be easy right because sunday is like sunday is in this case sunday is one huh? so if sunday is one you can easily tell you know oh, yes six minus one or six minus one you know or whichever direction is going so it's kind of you know easy to know this is how i'm going to do it the first thing i'm going to do is okay what is the first date in excel that excel recognizes right let's say first of january 1900 <clears throat> now what day was this 
let's see okay so it's a sunday right so technically it's saying that the first day in excel you know it's a sunday now what i want to do is i want to make that first day you know i want to make sunday like the zeroth day why i want to do that is that if sunday is zero then it's easy for me to just know that okay if this one has you know a value of five relative to sunday that is zero then slide by five if this one has six relative to sunday of zero slide by six so that's kind of the idea so what i'm going to do is if i subtract to one you know it technically is going to slide this to the zero see what i want to do this way i'm headed just watch this one that has one obviously is a sunday so i can say if i subtract one from the day you know i get 30th if i now check if this is divisible by seven and what the remainder is the remainder should be zero if it's the same day okay let's make this a date okay so this will kind of tell me the distance from sunday if it is a Sunday, obviously it's a zero. Like you, you may say, oh yeah, Victor, we could just have used the one, two, three, four, but I prefer this, right? I want Sunday. If it is a Sunday, it means there's no offset. The offset is zero. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So the offset is zero. So if I use this for the rest of them, whatever that offset is, is what I need to slide by. So I mean, technically, if you take this up and then <clears throat> we'll bring this down, we can also take this, you know, up and then we can double click this right so this is what we need to slide everybody by this number here so if i then come here and then do <coughs> um a subtraction i think this was the last day here yeah this one if i then do this and take it down yeah that will give me everything i want okay so what i'm doing basically is i want if since i'm dealing with sunday i want the offset from sunday to be zero so if the date is already a sunday let it be zero and do the same for the others and then use that to kind of slide so that's all i need let me delete all of this and then just do it in here so here i can put a variable and say maybe a is you know this last day of uh, of the of the months Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to then, you know, find the remainder when you subtract to one and you divide by seven. Okay, so this will tell me what I need to offset by. And then once I have that, I just subtract that from, you know, the date itself. Basically is what it is. Right. And then you have the answer. So the reason I like this expression is that it is generalizable. The reason I slid by one was because the first day of the of excel first of january 1900 was a sunday which was one so if i want to move sunday to be like a zero i need to move it by one day if i did say monday i move by two tuesday three so it means with this expression here i can calculate you know the last thursday last friday last saturday last anything all i need to do is to know what to slide by if sunday is sliding by one monday is two three four five six that's how it works so that's why i like this expression if you know this expression then you can can easily move around you know the different days of the year so it's much shorter maybe not as intuitive you know but when you kind of think about it again you kind of see what's going on you know and well that's why i like it but this one is much longer but you know um more intuitive you can always fix this 365 and 366 by using the mod function to determine whether it's a leap year or not a leap year don't get into the argument of oh if it's divisible by four and also divisible by 100 we we will understand all that but anyway just know that we can fix that you know easily so this is what i intended to share you know as my solution to you know this challenge i hope you like it if you do you know please hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out